Welcome to FootballGamePlan.com, where football makes sense. I'm Emory Hunt, the czar of the playbook. Bring you our NFL Week 4 preview between the Kansas City Chiefs and the New York Giants. Now let's take a look at some keys to victory for both teams, starting with the Chiefs. Efficient offense plus mistake-free offense is the best type of offense to play, and it's the reason why the Chiefs are sitting at 3-0. They will not beat themselves, and this week versus the Giants, Take advantage of the speed advantage that they have by putting your playmakers in space. Guys like Avery, McCluster, Charles, they can turn short plays into big gains. Now defensively, I look for the Chiefs to get physical with the giant wide receivers in an attempt to reroute these guys to help defenders and also to delay the timing and allow that pressure to get to Eli Manning. Also, I would keep an eye on personnel as the Giants can get predictable with the guys they send in the ball game. Now let's move over to the Giants in this ballgame. And right now the offensive line is struggling with the little things like missed assignments and sloppy fundamentals and that's leading to big problems, i.e. sacks and ineffective running. The good thing is that none of those things right there are physical or talent related, so it can be correctable. And in order to beat Kansas City, they're going to have to be both physically sound as well as mentally sound. Defensively, the defensive line should be able to get pressure on Alex Smith via the edges. However, in the back seven, they have to be able to communicate. The corners can squat versus KC's passing attack, but they can't get sleepy in coverage as the Chiefs run mirrored combo routes on both sides with delays underneath, and that could cause big time problems if you fall asleep in coverage. Right now, the New York Giants are struggling to protect up front, and the best way to get the passing game going versus a struggling offensive line going against an aggressive defensive front in Kansas City, the misdirection. So if they utilize a lot of misdirection in their passing game, it calms the rush down, giving Eli Manning the time to hit those big plays downfield with those awesome receiving targets. We're gonna show you two plays of how they can utilize misdirection to calm Kansas City's rush and also put Eli Manning on the move. Now this one is a straight drop back pass using a fake counter to get these two guys to football and also putting the running back in the, or the fullback out there in the flat. So we have your standard 3-4 front and we're gonna show you how they can create misdirection with the drop back pass off the fake counter. So what we're gonna have here, we're gonna have Eli Manning reverse out, fake the tailback, creating that illusion and sneak the fullback out in the flat. So that's your built-in hot read. Now on the back side we have the post corner, hopefully drawing this safety here. And also here we have the post, and if it's man, he's gonna keep running. So versus man, you keep going. Versus zone, you break to the corner, and that's where Eli Manning can go with the football. We're gonna have the receiver drift in and hold his own right here. So we're gonna have everybody else, again, turn back protection. Boom, base block here. Play side tackle, his job is to get this five technique block. Eli Manning drops straight back and has one, two, three options. So that's one example of how they can utilize the misdirection to calm the rush down, but even bringing in an extra blocker front side to give him the time to hit those targets downfield or even just get the football out in the flat to a fullback or if they want to get creative, put a tight end here or a receiver here. There's different ways they can get the football to their playmakers by utilizing misdirection. Let me show you another play where this time they're going to put Eli Manning on the move. Now here's a slightly different play where we're gonna put Eli Manning on the move off that same fake counter action so that way he can calm the rush down and get outside of the pocket as well as moving the pocket for him and that way you have those guys coming across the field on those crossers. Show you how we're gonna draw it up here. Slightly different formation now. We're in the eye formation and the backs are not offset. So what we're gonna do here, first of all, we're gonna bring the backside tackle, front side is gonna be the extra protector up front for Eli Manning because we're running the fake counter here counter that way, tackle, uh, tailback replaces the tackle, Eli Manning's job is to reverse out fake and get that short waggle motion. And again, what we're gonna do, everybody's turn back protection, turn back protection, turn back, play side tackle will always block head up on the five technique. So now you have two guys right here, front side, and if this guy doesn't blitz, you sneak the uh, fullback out in the flat once again, giving you your first read. And you have your crossers, your mid-level crossers, and your deep crossers. And you also have front side, the post corner. So now Eli Manning has three options. One, two, three, and if he has time to sit down, settle up, four. So 
Again, you see where the misdirection can cause hesitation for the defense. The defense would then not be as aggressive coming up field, thus helping that offensive line better pass protect and pass guys off. And that way, Eli Manning can get the football downfield accurately to those top playmakers in Cruz, Knicks, or even uh, Ruben Randall, the young uh, receiver out of LSU. So again, misdirection does a great job of calming the rush of the Kansas City Chiefs, and that's what the Giants are going to have to do this week in order to come away victorious. In order for the Kansas City Chiefs to knock off the New York Giants, they're going to have to get off the field on third downs, and they're going to have to communicate in the secondary versus the Giants passing game. And here's how they can get that done. Again, it's all about communicating. It's all about passing guys off. And one of the things the Giants love to do, they love to run the smash concept with curls on the backside. So let's draw the curls on the backside. We're going to explain that in a second. We're going to work strong side to weak side. And they love to run the smash concept. Get the slot guy going to the corner. Now, for Kansas City, to communicate and pass guys off is simple. Let's start with the cornerback. His job is to get a good bump on the number one wide receiver. And if this guy breaks his rod off for the hitch, he then cushions back to fall underneath the incoming corner route. Why? Because we have the inside backer. His job is to take away the seam, to make sure that Eli Manning won't hit the seam because his body is facing Eli Manning as he's dropping back in the coverage. Once he sees the number one receiver break off into a route, into the comeback or the hitch, his job is to close on that. So that's how you pass this guy off to the linebacker, and that's how you communicate. Now, the safety, if he sees no deep threat, he's closing over top of the corner route. So now you have three guys effectively covering the two guys here. Now what the middle backer's job is to do, his job is to work his depth because he's eyeing the running back. And if the running back stays in, he settles here, and he's a free guy. He's reading the eyes of Eli Manning. So wherever he's going, Eli Manning goes, it's his job to buzz over there and make a play. Now we have the nickel guy. His job is to wall off this inside receiver while keeping eyes on this wide receiver outside. Once he sees his guy breaking off his route, now he can continue to wall off and get underneath this comeback route. And once the safety sees no deep threat because the guy broke off his route as well, he closes over top of this comeback or this curl. And now you have the same rules apply on the outside corner gets a jam, sees no deep threat, sees this guy break off his route, cushions, closes over top. So you can see where communication is key. And if the Kansas City Chiefs can't communicate back there versus the New York Giants, I think they'll do a great job in getting these guys off the field and making plays on the ball versus Eli Manning. The X Factor for the Giants will be their offensive line and how well they pick up the blitz and stunt packages that the Chiefs love to bring. The reason why it's tough to block a 3-4 defense is the fact that you don't know where that fourth or fifth guy is coming from, so you have to communicate up front. Otherwise, your quarterback will be on the ground throughout the course of the ballgame. The X Factor for the Chiefs will be their red zone offense. They can move the ball well 20 to 20, but once they get inside the red zone, they tend to stall and settle for threes. They're gonna have to convert those field goals into touchdowns this week versus the Giants. Now here are some coaching points for both teams in this ball game. For the Giants defensively, the biggest battle will go on between Jason Pierre-Paul and the rookie Eric Fisher. That's a battle Pierre-Paul is gonna have to win in order to put Alex Smith on the ground and on offense, I look for Victor Cruz on those short option routes. Here's a guy that's very dangerous after the catch, and if you can't trust your offensive line, you want to put the football in your playmaker's hands very quickly, and here's a guy that can do a lot of damage after the catch. And the base formation for the Giants should be three wide receivers, one tight end, one running back. Do not put the fullback out there on the field. It slows down the offense, and it also makes them predictable. So I think if they go three wides, one tight end, one running back, their offense will look a lot better, especially this week versus Kansas City. Now for the Chiefs in this ball game, you wanna force Eli Manning to quicken his decisions. I have full confidence in the Chiefs front seven to rally up and make a tackle and get the Giants off the field. And the Giants already are struggling to stay on the field on third down. So this would be a great game to make Eli quicken those decisions, those short passes and get him off the field. And Alex Smith has to start challenging deep down the field. Right now, teams are just playing cover two, a tight cover four. You have to be able to stretch the defense vertically to loosen up the pressure, not only in the passing game, but also create more opportunities for Jamal Charles to run the football. And you wanna protect the middle of your defense. The Giants would love to hit the seam routes, would love to attack the hashes, protect the middle, force Eli to be consistently accurate down the sidelines so you can better get those guys over top and make plays. So you wanna protect the middle and force the Giants to go outside with their passing game.
I actually like the Giants in this ball game. I think that three wide receiver set will open things up for David Wilson in the ground game. And I think a lot of their issues were fundamental and mental, not physical. So I think they'll be able to match up versus the Chiefs and do a better job this week putting the football in the end zone. And defensively, I think their defensive line does pose a problem on the edges versus Eric Fisher and company. So I think the Giants go on the road and knock off Kansas City. I also want to give a huge shout out to Giant Fan Forums and Chief Fan Forums for always showing football game plan support.